Huge shout out to my supporting patrons and Fine Tool partners. I couldn't do it without you. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's give this a shot. <laughs> So I told you that I was going to make something using the castle joint unlike anything that I've ever seen before. And that's why I decided to make this 8x10 picture frame using the castle joint on all four corners. It's a little unusual, but it creates some beauty on this frame that you won't normally find anywhere else. I tried to up the ante a little bit on a video that I did, oh gosh, I think it was about two years ago when I made a half lap picture frame that had these little half inch overhangs. So I decided to incorporate the castle joint in it and see how it would turn out. Now I'll tell you that this particular joint setup didn't quite turn out as good as I thought it would either. Uh, much like the join it episode that I did a couple of weeks prior, but I still think for a second attempt it was pretty good. This is gonna be a learning experience type of joint, much like doing hand cut dovetails. You're never going to get it quite right. Um, but I think it works good. It uh, is going to hold together very nicely and is a very, very beautiful frame. So let's go ahead and get into how to do this. And if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. If you like videos like this and want to see more, click the subscribe button that you see and hit the notification bell and it'll notify you whenever I upload new content. So let's get to it. So I started off by figuring out what size of a frame that I wanted to make and I decided on an 8x10. So I made myself a pattern, but I did something a little bit extra to make it easier on myself when it comes to figuring out the measurements that I need. Alright, so I took a sheet of quarter inch plywood and just cut an 8x10 piece out, but I did something like I said, a little bit extra. The glass of a picture frame normally sits behind a 3 8 inch deep rabbit all the way around. So I actually cut off the 3 quarter inch amount, which is 3 8 here, 3 8 here for a total of 3 quarter. So I took 3 quarters of an inch off one side and 3 quarters of an inch off other, another side, which left me with 7 and a quarter by 9 and a quarter. So since my rails and styles are 2 inches wide, that's a total of 4 inches more plus the half inch overhang on either end, which is a total of one inch. So that's five inches total for all. So these are cut to dimension. Now all I gotta do is cut the joinery. Let's give it a shot. So unlike last time, if you haven't seen the video already, you can check it out right over there. And I basically cut all of the joinery using a single blade, which is a full kerf, um, or eighth of an inch thick, however you wanna look at it. But this time I'm gonna use my dado stack and try it a little bit different to see if I can get these joints a little tighter because if you remember or not, the joints weren't exactly the best. I had to do a little filling to make sure everything lined up nice and tight um, and looked presentable for the video. But unfortunately for me, the joint didn't quite come out the way I wanted it to. So I'm going to switch from that blade to my dado stack. And if you guys haven't seen the dado stack that I'm using, it's a Freud dial -a width dado. This is not a, a wobble blade, uh, but it's an SD608. I have this in my Amazon store if you want to pick one up for yourself. It's a really, really versatile dado stack. So let's set this up and I'll show you the first joint we're going to cut. All right, I'm going to start with the rails and styles first. We'll do the turrets at the very end. So what I've done is I've laid out exactly where center is of this particular board and I've measured over 3 8 of an inch this way and 3 8 of an inch this way to give me 3 quarter centered on this board as best as possible. Using my mag shims, which I featured in a few of my videos, I've taken out four pieces which total out to be a half inch because each red piece is an eighth and I've set it right up against my fence. So that will give me the half inch overhang that I want with this piece at a 90 degree angle to it. So now all I need to do is transfer the center mark of that board that I just did while holding it up against my mag shims. And that will give me the center portion of where this board needs to intersect. So just measure over 3 8 this way, 3 8 that way. And that way I know exactly in a, in a general area to start for the joinery. Now to find the half thickness of this board, I've actually got a piece of scrap. It's a cutoff from what I was showing you just a minute ago. 
So I'm going to put it up against my miter gauge, and just like before on the prior video, I'm going to run it through with the blade set at a certain height below center, and then I'm going to flip it over, run it through again, and see how much I have left. Then I'll raise the blade up a little bit more, run it through, flip it over, run it through again, until I remove every bit of the center portion that I'm trying to cut. Once I get to the point where it just basically takes the center portion out, I've got it set halfway and I can make my cuts. Okay, after dialing that in, that joint fits nice. So now onto the second part of the joint. The next part of the joint is going to require the half inch overhang to be between the fence and the blade. So using my mag shims that I was using earlier, keeping that half inch thickness, I'm going to use it as the reference since that's what I used to lay out my lines in the first place. Making sure that they touch but don't move the blade. Now the next part of this joint is going to require the pieces that we just cut the groove on from face down like this to up on the edge like this and we're actually going to cut both edges. We're actually going to cut a notch that is the same length as the width of this board because it's got to wrap around it but the leftover part that's going to be in the middle of the board has to fit the groove that we just cut which was three quarters of an inch thick. So. In order to take a piece out here and a piece out here and leave three quarters, that's about a five eighths of an inch on either side. So I've got my blade set up just under five eighths of an inch and I'm gonna sneak up on that. I'm gonna first establish the half inch overhang here and then work my way to the other side uh, to achieve the thickness of the board. And then we'll adjust the height later to fit the three quarter inch groove that we made earlier. All right, so I've got that section cut out. Now just to test it with the width of the board and it fits exactly how I want it to. So now I just batch cut all of that out on the remaining pieces. Okay, now with all those cuts made, all the pieces fit the way they should, nice and snug. So all I gotta do now is cut the castle turret to go in all of these spots right here. Let's hope it goes well. Now I've got a piece of mahogany or walnut, I'm not quite sure, this was a hand-me-down piece of wood, it looks like mahogany, and I'm going to use it to make the uh, pieces for the square. So I've got my dado stack raised up to a three quarters of an inch, maybe a little bit taller, because I can overcut this if I want to for some sanding room. And then I've got the blade set just off center, so whenever I go to flip this around, it will center the groove and I can just work out and out and out until I can get to the point where I can uh, do a final cut to fit that particular joint. All right, so let's do the final test fit. All right, so now that I've got those cut, all I need to do now is cut a slice, just a tiny little slice off of this piece, so that way I'm left with four that I can put in all four corners. One thing you need to do is make sure that there is glue on all four sides of the turret pieces that you're putting in, otherwise you just won't get adequate glue surface. And then I just clamp it up overnight, and then the next day, ran it through my drum sander, which I love this tool, <laughs> and uh, just cleaned up any of the pieces that were sticking up a little proud. Now I'm going to run this over the router using a 3 8 inch rabbiting bit. I've already cleared it with my wife which side she wants as the front, so the knot hole gets the pick. So I'm going to raise this up little by little, and I'm going to do climb cuts instead of the normal directional cuts because it will chip out really bad. Oak is pretty bad about that. So I'm just gonna do little by little climb cuts until I have the depth that I want to achieve. Then I'm going to take a 45 degree chamfer bit and then run around the uh, front face on the outside and inside perimeters and then on the back uh, backside outside perimeters. One of the things that occurs with the rabbiting bit is that rounded over interior that you just have to take a chisel and hammer and notch out to where it's a 90 degree angle. Same goes for the chamfer that's going to be on the front face. Just take a 45 point to it. 
Now after doing a little sanding with a random orbit and some hand sanding on all the chamfers, I'm gonna take some rattle can lacquer, clear coat, and just put on about two or three coats, and we'll be done. So what'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> I know that it was probably a little mind-blowing to, to figure out how to do this just right and for me it's the same way I mean like I said it's gonna take a lot of practice in order to make this right but unfortunately I don't have that kind of time on my hands so if I have to incorporate this on another project I better take my time <laughs> and maybe practice a little bit in any case uh, get out in the shop and try this for yourself whether it just be one joint or make you a picture frame with it and see how it works out for you. It's going to take some practice, so don't be frustrated if they don't quite turn out the way you think. But if you guys have liked this, I want to invite you to check out my other videos that you see right over here. Click that uh, subscription circle that you see, and I guess I'll see you guys on the next build. So talk to you later. Enjoy, boom!